So welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm going to quickly cover in today's video the recent breaking news that the second biggest DeFi hack in history took place it's on the wormhole bridge between Solana and Ethereum. Effectively, the hacker minting wrapped Ethereum on Solana and then withdrawing actual Ethereum to the Ethereum blockchain. So we're going to dive into that and see exactly what has gone on and what repercussions there may be from this. If you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's jump straight on in. So as I said, this is the second second biggest DeFi hack we've seen in history. The first, the biggest hack last summer was of course Poly Network. Infamously from that attack, the actual hacker in this case gave back all the funds. So $600 million was stolen, but they did return the funds a few weeks after the initial hack and they actually signed off when returning the stolen funds with the message from your chief security advisor. Rather tongue in cheek there. But now we have this, the second biggest hack over on the wormhole bridge. They've currently taken the site down, actively working to get the portal back up and running. What is wormhole? This is just a token bridge. You can transfer funds from different blockchains onto the other. So say you're on Ethereum, you wanna move some funds to Solana or to Terra to Binance Smart Chain, the Polygon network, so on and so forth. This is somewhere you will come and just bridge your funds from one network to the other. Of course, there are some risks behind this due to the fact you're not relying on the security of the chain that you're moving the funds from, but the kind of middleman that are facilitating the transfers here. So I feel like a lot of issues have happened since Vitalik tweeted this. So this was on the 7th of January. And Vitalik put out a tweet here saying, my argument for why the future will be multi-chain, however, it will not be cross-chain. There are fundamental limits to the security of bridges that hop across multiple zones of sovereignty. And since this post, we had an issue with token approvals on any swap slash multi-chain with about six tokens that were exploited and users' funds were actually being removed. And now to further compound things here, we've got another exploit with Wormhole and a total of 100 20,000 Ethereum being stolen, an absolutely ungodly amount there. So Vitalik pointed this out, you can't just pick and choose a separate data layer and security layer, your data layer must be your security layer. So Vitalik pointing out the potential vulnerabilities here with these cross-chain bridges, and then of course this has occurred. So over the last 16 hours here, we had this, an initial tweet from Wormhole, the Wormhole network is down for maintenance as we look into a potential exploit. Well, that potential exploit became a real exploit, 120,000 wrapped Ethereum. So what they then had to go ahead and do was actually add all that Ethereum back to actually ensure the wrapped ETH was backed one-to-one -one with real ETH. And as they say, we're working to quickly get the network back up and running. And then a few hours later, the vulnerability has been patched. So they found out the issue and put a fix in place there. But this is very bad for the overall reputation of bridges and that of Solana's ecosystem as well. Of course, there's been quite a few service outages as of late DDoS attacks, the blockchain stopping for long periods, and now we have quite a rather large hack here that exploited Ethereum over on the Solana network. So this guy here, Kelvin Fitcher, put together an epic post where he goes through exactly how this took place. This Twitter thread is about 100 tweets long, so we'll just summarize. Essentially, he says this, Wormhole has a set of guardians, and these guardians are the ones who sign off transactions between the two chains. So without these guys signing off transactions, they don't go through. He says it's a little more complicated than that in practice, but that's the general idea. So a transaction that pulled out 80,000 ETH was actually the attacker transferring 80,000 ETH from Solana to Ethereum, but the Wormhole guardians here had somehow signed off on this 80,000 ETH transfer as if it was legit. So the hacker has duped the system and fraudulently minted a load of Ethereum. And then to make it real, he then just withdraws it from wrapped ETH on Sol to real ETH back on ETH L1. So after a rather lengthy technical breakdown of the various signatures required to sign off transaction, he goes on, that's not the system address being used, this one here. The hacker is using a fake system program and the attacker could effectively lie about the fact the signature check program was executed, thus the signatures weren't being checked at all. 
And after that point, it's pretty much game over. As he says, the attacker made it look like the Guardian signed off a 120,000 ETH deposit into Wormhole on Solana, even though they hadn't. And that just left the attacker with the final step to complete, which was to turn the play money into real money by withdrawing it back to Ethereum. Numerous transactions here totaling 80K plus 10K. And then later on, they discovered even more up to 120,000 Ethereum lost. So this Etherscan address now has been flagged. I will leave it in the description if you want to poke around. You can see the guy's got 93,750 ETH sat in there and you can see the original exploited 80,000 ETH from Wormhole over to ETH mainnet here. So pretty incredible turn of events. And what makes it even more juicy here is the fact this guy's clearly stolen somewhere in the region of 250 to 300 million dollars, depending on the ETH price point. But he now has an option on the table. So like Poly Network, the hacker actually returned those funds. Well, this guy's being given an out. I imagine it's very difficult to extract a huge sum of money like this from crypto land into the real world as everyone can see those addresses and will be following those addresses with a fine tooth comb and there will for sure be analytics teams working on finding out who this guy is as well but what they've said to him is that following the exploit they've reached out put a message on the ethereum blockchain stating that they will give him a bit of a bug bounty here so this is the white hat agreement being talked about so this is the message they posted. We noticed you were able to exploit the Solana VAA verification and mint tokens. We'd like to offer you a white hat agreement and present you a bug bounty of $10 million for exploit details and returning of the wrapped ETH you've minted. So this guy now has on the one hand, do I take 250 million and take the risk that I might be put into prison and it's gonna be difficult to take that money out? Or do I take the other side of the bet here and just take the $10 million bug bounty and be able to sleep a lot easier at night? night i do think there will probably be a positive resolution to this due to the fact 10 million dollars is a hell of a lot of money and you're probably not going to want that kind of heat following you around now other issues with this so temporarily before that wrapped ethereum was backed one to one so there was a moment in time where this guy's just exploited all the eth out of the pool and now the solana wrapped eth is not actually backed by anything virtually it makes it useless and worthless well at that point people are very concerned of course people do overexpose themselves to protocols you can see the tvl on solana has been going down and generally this puts a massive dent in confidence to the protocols on solana as well because if you're uncertain that your fund are actually backed by anything maybe you've got a load of wrapped ETH on Sol and you're yield farming over there if that's just become worthless well you're going to be running to the exit straight away to withdraw your fund you've now got a massive loss of confidence in this network so you can see a huge decline in the TVL on a load of these Solana based dApps over the last 24 hours and I'm sure this will probably continue even though they have now backed the wrapped ETH one-to-one -one with real ETH again but this also puts up another question as to who the heck actually funds this so some of the Solana early investors like Kyle Samani and co here will be tagged in tweets this one's a little bit tongue-in-cheek he says hey Kyle Samani where's the 300 million coming from and this is actually in respect to a previous tweet from Kyle Samani towards Do Kwon about Anchor previously when Do was tweeting about this so a little bit of banter in a rather serious situation here but it does pose a genuine question who the heck picks up the bill here is it going to be some of the LPs is it the Solana team overall is it wormhole where does the 300 million dollars of Ethereum just appear back from on the flip side, of course, this is a positive thing. They have now backed the ETH, so this does mean people's funds are essentially valuable again on a one-to-one -one basis. And so for those who were very stressed last night about this situation, they now have a positive resolution to this, but I imagine most people will be withdrawing their funds from the network. And this comes just a day after we covered the Solana Pay release, which is super, super bullish, absolutely undercutting all payment processors. I think for the long run, Solana is going to do massive things but we've just seen loads of teething problems over the last I would say six months and issues just keep cropping up cropping up cropping up no surprise here to see it down around 13 percent over the last 24 hours on a day where we've got Bitcoin down five percent ETH down six percent and most of your favorite alts probably down in the region of 10 percent so public relations work to be done on Solana and for cross-train bridges and their security overall clearly a lot of work to be done here still so I hope you appreciated that quick update and it's brought you up to speed with the happenings in the crypto space over the last 24 hours 
dollars with this wild hack, the second largest in DeFi history. And we'll see how this one plays out. Will the hacker return the funds and get his 10 million bug bounty? Let me know down below what would you do in that situation. Thanks for watching and goodbye.